Hi everyone, welcome back to Alice and the Giant Bookshelf. Today it's a Garb August video and I'm aiming to answer the age-old question, who did the Bonk Buster best? It's the Battle of the Bonk Busters. Who will be crowned queen? Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. Um, my name's Alice and I have way too many books and today I'm going to be talking about week one of Garb August. Now in case you haven't been following Garb August, this is a month-long event in August in which we read trashy books and this was invented by Criminoli. We have a whole dirty baker's dozen of hosts, I will list them in the description down below. Do go and check out their Garb August content as well. Now week one the theme was sex and violence and I decided that it was about time we all found out the answer to the question who will win the battle of the bonk busters? So we have Judith Krantz, we have Jackie Collins and we have Jilly Cooper. In the 70s and 80s these women were all prolifically writing the romance novel um, and they were writing romance novels like never before. Now in case you're not sure what a bonkbuster is, the Cambridge Dictionary Online defines bonkbuster as a type of popular book with a story in which the characters have a lot of sex. This was actually a term coined in 1989 by British writer Sue Lim and it was to describe a subgenre of commercial romance novels in the 70s and 80s um, as well as there were many subsequent miniseries adaptations. So many of these bonk busters are very large in size. Here's a Jilly Cooper, it is the largest book I attempted in week one. Um, I have an even larger Jilly Cooper jump here but I did not read this one. So let's talk about how week one of Garb August went. How was the Battle of the Bonk Busters? So the first book that I picked up was Score by Jilly Cooper and before I started reading any Bonk Busters, I'd never read one before, I feel like I'm reading these so that you don't have to, um, I was going into this thinking that these would be basically books that were a series of sex scenes joined together by an extremely flimsy plot. Not so with Jilly. Jilly Cooper's score had a very long blurb which I have read in another video so I won't go back over it here. I selected it for two reasons. One, it actually had the word bonking in the blurb which I thought was a new height of trashiness and it also professed to be about a murder. So I thought oh great this will actually have some plot that isn't about sex. Unfortunately Jilly Cooper <laughs> definitely didn't get the memo about flimsy plots. This has so much plot, this has plot coming out of its seams and it also has about a million characters, um, all of whom are listed on approximately 10 pages of cast list in the front. There's even a page devoted to the animals of the book. Jilly Cooper's pretty famous for her bonkbusters being about rich people, usually in the world of like horses um, or involving horse racing, that type of scene. Um, this one does have that scene in it but it's also about a musical conductor who is pretty detested by one and all. Having looked this up I think this is actually the fifth book featuring this character and some of these other characters I assume were in the previous books but this one is the one where he gets murdered. So <sighs> cut to the chase Alice. So I set off into this book expecting murder, expecting sex, there actually wasn't as much sex as I was expecting to be honest. When there was sex oh boy was there sex but when there wasn't it was tediously dull. This is a book about not just one horrible rich man but many horrible rich people. Like there's no likeable character in this book, they are all vile. Comment down below if you disagree with me, if you've read any Jilly Coopers where there are really good characters. These characters, I hated them all. I didn't like a single person in score. Um, so that was a bit of a problem. 
And also, it was just taking its time, meandering along, just telling us about the day-to-day -day life of these really horrible, super rich people. And I just couldn't put up with it any longer. I sort of vaguely decided this might well be a DNF. And I said to myself, right, read 200 pages. The murder will have happened by page 200, surely, even though this is nearly 800 pages. If it says there's a murder on the blurb, the murder will have happened by page 200. I reached page 178 and I thought, there's literally no sign of this murder. So I flicked ahead and I can report that the murder, which is on the blurb, does not happen until page 350 or thereabouts. And right before the murder, somebody kills a dog. So I'm not going to get involved with this book. I'm just, no. No thank you. I just couldn't stand it any longer. So, so boring. I'm sorry, Jilly Cooper. I actually did think that Jilly would be the best of the bunch, but although her writing might be better, technically, in some ways, than the other two, it's just so indulgent. It just goes on and on and on. But some of the writing is really, really cringeworthy. At the beginning of chapter 10, when a couple of the characters have just got married. It says, the guests were firmly shepherded upstairs for champagne cocktails in Helen's blue living room, and the bride and groom disappeared for their first legal bonk. Yeah, sorry, Jilly, I, I couldn't read more than 178 pages of score. If you'd like to recommend me a better Jilly Cooper that you think I would like, let me know in the comments down below. I do need a little bit more happening, and I also do need like at least one character that I can care about remotely. If that's not available in Jilly Cooper, I will not be reading any more. But this one was a firm DNF. And I really don't think I can face Try and Jump either because apparently it's part of the same series and it's actually later in the same series. And it's nearly a thousand pages, so no thank you. So next I picked up my smallest book of the Bonkbusters, Jackie Collins, The World is Full of Divorced Women. This is not one of Jackie Collins' most famous books and it's also one of her shorter books, but that was definitely a blessing. I did finish this one. This was my first book completed of Garb August. I can confirm it's incredibly trashy. I think this is probably the trashiest book that I've ever read. I found it very hard to read based on the fact that one of the main characters is called Muffin. Jackie definitely writes a lot of sex scenes and the sex scenes that she does write are definitely pretty explicit. Luckily, I think this one was mostly about people getting divorced, so there wasn't maybe as many sex scenes as there might have been in other ones. This is what I expected from like a trashy, over-the-top smutty romance. Again, the people are just horrible and I didn't really care for them. I think this one was written in the 70s. It follows Cleo James who finds out that her husband is cheating on her and it also follows Muffin who is kind of trying to make it as a star and she has a bit of a horrible boyfriend. So pretty much all of the men in this are portrayed as complete fools and pretty much the women in this are walking all over the men um but not in like a really good feminism way it's it's quite yeah uh, i mean as you'd expect from a, a novel from the 70s it's not at all pc and yeah i i i literally cannot read a quote from this because i don't want it on my channel um it's very rude and there are a lot of words in this one that are certainly not for those of you who don't like swearing in books. So yeah, Jackie Collins, just as trashy as I expected her to be. And finally, in the Bonkbuster stakes, I tried Judith Krantz. Yeah, I think Judith Krantz is pretty famous for this book, Scruples, but she did write other sort of trashy Bonkbustery books in the 70s and 80s and 
Um, many of them did get make, made into mini series, as mentioned before. So Scruples, I believe this is a t TV tie-in cover um, from the TV series Scruples from the 80s. I am sorry to report I was not able to finish this one either. It's another DNF. I really did try very hard to read Scruples. I tried and I tried. Scruples definitely had the most cringeworthy, most off-putting sex scene that I've ever, ever read. I feel quite traumatised by it. Yeah, it, it wasn't pleasant to read. The sort of words that were in it were not words you want to hear in a sex scene. Um, so yeah, and that's, that's pretty early in the book. That's about page 33. Following that, there wasn't really any other sex um, in the bit that I'd read up to, which was about page 120. Because there was actual storyline to this after the big scene, shall we call it, which happens directly after the protagonist has thrown her very old, very rich, dead husband's ashes out of the window of a plane. Mm. After that, um, we have a scene I heard that is the least said about the better. It then goes into very much backstory and it's very much like an ugly duckling sort of story. Um, she went to Paris and kind of sorted herself out. It's made out like that. So a bit of a coming of age type part to it. It then also went off on a backstory about one of her colleagues because Scruples in the title is like a really high fashion store that the main character has set up. Her name's Billy, Billy Icorn, I think. But yeah, so Billy has set up this store. Spider is a photographer and uh, it went into his backstory as well, as well as a designer called Valentine. And I, I just couldn't carry on with this. I did skim to see if I could see anything getting better, but... I, I couldn't take any more. It's 576 pages. There was no way I was getting much past 200 and I stopped at page 120. I had had enough. Again, quite boring. I mean, I can definitely see with all three of these how if in the 80s you were a teenager and you got hold of these, you would probably absolutely love them because they're just full of scandal they're full of cringeworthy moments. I can see these as books that you would pass around with your t other teenage friends and laugh at and learn stuff from that you shouldn't really be learning. At, at the ripe old age of 30 odds, I am not wanting to switch to being a romance reader anytime soon. Certainly not bonkbuster romance. So yeah, I think we can chalk bonkbusters up to a fail for me. Um, thumbs down. <laughs> very, very trashy, but not books that I can really see myself getting into reading. So Trashy Romance is thankfully done with week one. I won't be picking up any more of these. I would not judge anybody who did want to read them because there were elements to them that were fun. So who won the Battle of the Bonkbusters? I would probably have to say Jackie because... Jackie Collins at least had provided a book that was quick and easy to read and it did what it said on the tin. It was a book about like just overly spoiled rich people having sex and it didn't pretend to be anything else. So I think Jackie wins the Trashy Award and she also probably wins the most readable award. I was expecting it to go to Jilly, but sorry Jilly, you're books are very, very long-winded and are just full of horrible, horrible people. So yeah, that was Battle of the Bonkbusters. Did I read any other trash in week one? Yes, I had to have a palate cleanser after Jackie Collins. So I read one of my trash adjacent books, um, a Red Dwarf spin-off book. Um, so I read, I had already read Red Dwarf in here, so I was reading Better Than Life in this omnibus. And as TV, TV tie-ins go, this is really good quality trash because it uh, is written by the writers of the TV series, Grant Naylor. So it was really, really funny and it was really, really like the TV series. I think this book was pretty much adapting series three into book form, but Grant Naylor are able to 
put in a lot more that they obviously couldn't put into the TV series. So this was really enjoyable, really, really fun read. And if this is trash, I want more of it. So yeah, thankfully there was something good in week one, but it didn't qualify as sex or violence. So week one of Garb August is over. We're currently um, at the start of week two. And by the time you see this video, we'll be quite near the end of week two. And week two was supposed to be to read vintage trash. I have got one vintage trash on the go as a buddy read, but my other one is very modern trash. So because these are both buddy reads, I wanted to get them started. And I have started Flowers in the Attic, which I'm reading with Jack at Spread Book Joy and Gemma at Gem of Books. And um, yeah, this is definite, definite trash. Um, Virginia Andrews most famous work so far as trashy as they come and yeah I'm going to enjoy buddy reading this with my fellow booktubers so that was vintage trash this is not this is <laughs> Dolly Parton and James Patterson's book that came out I believe last year Run Rose Run and this is absolutely glorious so far. Enjoying reading this. I'm reading this one with Ange from Ange's Book Chatter and Danny from Danny's Book World. So I think these are going to be two, if not amazing, then really, really fun and funny perhaps. Buddy Reads. I do think Flowers in the Attic is going to be very hard hitting, but hopefully reading it with two friends, we can enjoy discussing it. Yeah. So yeah, that's my Garb August so far. How is your Garb August going? Have you read any trashy books? Have you DNF'd any trashy books? I have managed to double my DNF tally for the year so far in week one. So pretty pleased with myself there for not making myself hate read Jilly Cooper or Ju Judith Krantz. That's all from me today. If you'd like to give this video a like, if you enjoyed it, that would be great. And please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. My next video will be a non-trashy one and I will hope very much to see you all again soon for another video all about books here on Alice and the Giant Bookshelf. Bye for now.